Hello YouTube denizens, David Storm here with picklocks.com and today we are bringing you a video on how to use our broken key extractors, specifically our spiral broken key extractors. Now these are my favorite broken key extractors. There's quite a few types on the market out there, but uh, these are what I have used for 16 years in the locksmithing industry. Um, so we broke a key. It happens. Now this is a Schlage. <clears throat> and one of the things with a Schlage is it's a uh, very tight tolerance. So it, it's uh, the, the more slop you have in the lock, such as uh, ignition locks on cars, the better and easier this is going to work for you. It's not that it won't work in a Schlage, it's just fairly difficult to screw this in like I'm doing right here. Now I've screwed this in on one side. Odds are <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to get one on this side. I did it on the back side as you can see because you can't see the, the, the uh, tool going through there. Normally we would then screw another one along the other side we would cross them over so that it bites into the key. You can even twist them um, to get a better bite on the key. But as you can see, I don't have much room to get this one in. Just too tight of tolerance. But if, if I had, I would twist this this way so that I get a good bite on that key because these grooves are serrated and sharp and will bite into the key. But one should be perfectly um, sufficient to get this key out. So we're going to put one in like this. As 99% of the time on vehicles, I can get one on either side, uh, rotate it, and spin it a couple times to get a uh, to wind this a little bit. Again, that brings the two pieces of wire closer together, creates a a tight bind on that key and I can pull it out but as it is this is what we are working with so now I'm going to <clears throat> this is very very difficult to pull this out and you can see right here we have a pin that has dropped down we're going to have to deal with that uh, at some point but right now we're just going to try to pull this back that little bit until we feel it stop um, and then we'll we'll deal with because I can look through the front and see, I can actually uh, lift one pin up and see if the other one has dropped. Um, and if so, then I lift that pin up and look and keep going on down because we could have been broken off all the way back here and we would have to contend with these uh, four in front. Which, what I usually do is look in there and count, lift them up and count until I can see um, the broken key and see that okay these three are engaged in the key and won't be a problem but these are going to have to be lifted up um, because with this flat edge right here it no longer has a ramp to push this pin up so it's this pin is going to have to be pushed up from the front as I pull the key out so I'll show you what that looks like so first off this is very difficult to pull out very very difficult you're binding against the side wall and you're binding against the key so what I do is I take a pair of pliers and I put it as close to the front of the lock as possible and then lever the nose forward like that see it move and I just keep doing that a little bit at a time now I can feel through the pliers that I've engaged that uh, pin so now we're going to, if anyone wondered what that straight pick was for on our pick and what you would ever use that for on our swick, well, here we go. This is what we're going to use it for. We're going to go in there and we're going to lift that pin up and out of our way, just like that right there. Now this might get a little tricky. Doing it left-handed with this tool. There we go. Now I'm going to go in and again, I'm going to grab that and pull. Once it's past that particular pin, I won't have to worry about it. Like 
There we go. See if we can screw that back in a little further. Yep. And you can actually use uh, this tool if you grab it here and not on this. If you grab it here, see if we can get that to focus again. Come on. You can uh, twist it using this as well, like so. And that will also um, make sure that that drives in nice and deep there just like that so we have to get that one out of the way though so let's try to do that it's a little tricky to get this on camera and uh, get all, everything lined up and keep my hands out of the light <laughs> a lot going on here let's try it with this, since it's a little tricky to get in there anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this up and out of my way. Or try to. As you can see, there's a... Um, the threading action is really nice for a lot of different applications. Like I'm actually threading that in there a little bit to get that up and out of my way. And let's see if we can get that to pull out far enough. See it coming? All I need is for it to get far enough that it holds that pin up. And I believe that's the case, so I'm going to unscrew this one. And there we have it. Look at that. So I'm just going to keep walking this out. Just like this. Until I get it to a point where I can pull. There it is, see it coming? And now I can just kind of pull on it. And I've gotten it far enough out that I can actually reach up with my fingers and pull that broken piece of key out. That can be a nightmare with other tools. Uh, a lot of tools go in and try to go over top and hook and uh, if your springs are too tight up there uh, you won't have enough room to get the tool up and over top of the key especially for example this was cut on a high bidding so uh, you don't have much room to begin with past those uh, springs because you've already got the pin engaging so your springs are already compressed there so that's why uh, that's why we use these tools and why they're so effective and as I said, in a, in a vehicle, you would put two of them, one on one side of the key, one on the other, and then you would, let's show you an example here. So you would run it down one side and the other, just like this. All right, you don't have much room in a schlag. Maybe a quick set, you'd be able to do that, or like a master padlock, something like that. But that's what it would look like in a vehicle. You would then twist this like this because that bites down on the key and then pull and then repeat. Like a lot of times this will come loose in a vehicle. Uh, as you're pulling it out, uh, you'll hit some resistance and it will turn, come loose. Um, that's oftentimes indicative of knowing that you're going to be dealing. You've got to get in there and push some pins up. Uh, but go back in you do it again put one on either side uh, bind and repeat rinse and repeat until you get the key uh, the broken piece out so that is how you use these you will bend them uh, there's just no way around it these are disposable uh, I, in my lifetime I've gone through so many um, but this is I believe the one we used right here yeah you can see how it's a little warped there now. It's all right. These are um, very durable, actually. And I get several years of use out of these, even as a locksmith. And uh, until this is no longer sharp 
along the edge where it won't bite, you can continue to use these. You don't have to replace them just because they're a little bent or whatever. Uh, I've used these for many years, and so, uh, yeah, they're perfectly fine as long as they continue to have that bite. Just re, uh, they're, they're pretty pliable. Uh, so just, you know, bend them back into a, a semi-straight profile, and then using that uh, serration, that's what causes it to screw itself down the side of the, the key. And, uh, yeah. So hopefully that helps. If, uh, if you liked our video, if this did help you out, please hit the like. And uh, don't forget to subscribe for upcoming content for picklocks.com. I'm David Storm.